بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ابن القيم said that the first point to establish this love is in reciting the Quran and wait not just reciting the Quran not just memorizing the Quran but reciting and memorizing the Quran with its pure meaning with its pure meaning my dear brothers and sisters if you don't know Arabi don't fret the Quran is available in English in Spanish in French in German in Chinese Japanese every language you can think of it's available so understand what your Lord is trying to say understand what what messages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending to us and from there we will begin to develop a kind of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second point Ibn al-Qayyim mentions is uh, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with doing good deeds with doing good voluntary deeds not the fara'id not praying five times a day not uh, giving 30 days of Ramadan fasting not doing hajj not giving your 2.5% excess wealth but doing more than that doing extra the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah says my slave continues to get closer to me by performing voluntary good deeds until I love him. My dear brothers and sisters, for him to love you, it means that you are close to him. And you only get closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do more than what is required of you. And you can only do more than what is required of you only if you truly love him. The third point Ibn Qayyim mentions is to constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all circumstances with your limbs, with your tongues, and with your hearts. When you are blessed, say Alhamdulillah. When you are shocked, say SubhanAllah. When you are amazed, say Allahu Akbar. When you transgress yourself or others, say Astaghfirullah. And when you are tested, remember Allah. Say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you better. The fourth point Ibn al-Qayyim mentions to us is giving preference to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves over what you love. Even when you are, you, even when you are overtaken by your desires. Yani, for example, you're offered a job the job of your life you can't turn it down the best salary the best benefits best retirement plan absolutely amazing job offer you accept it and you start working then all of a sudden you realize that that job makes you miss Fajr or Dhuhr or Asr or Maghrib or even Isha this job of yours makes you miss one of the five connections that you have with your Lord. When you choose to leave that job out of fear of losing that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is this but love? Ibn Qayyim says that act, that act only strengthens and cultivates a love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth point Ibn Qayyim mentions is familiarizing yourselves with the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. What better way can you establish a love with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala than knowing who he is and what his characteristics are? When you call upon Allah, you know you're calling upon Ar-Razzaq because he's the only one who can provide you, for you. You know you're calling upon Al-Qawi because you know he's the only one who can protect you. He's the only one powerful enough to protect you. So my dear brothers and sisters, what better way to have a love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm talking about the real love again, than to know who He is subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sixth point Ibn al-Qayyim mentions is to always realize the kindness, the caring, the love, and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, displays in your life. Um, the ones that are openly apparent to you and the ones that would require some thinking about. Um, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has 100 units of mercy. 100 units of mercy. 
He reserved 99 of those units for the Day of Judgment. And he sent down one unit of Rahmah down to this dunya. So just think about it. Every mercy, your eyesight, your hearing, your, 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 your senses, your ability to taste, the ability to walk with two feet, the ability to have two hands, the ability to have five fingers on one hand, have ten fingers in two hands, the ability to go to the bathroom comfortably without, without having any assistance. All these are mercies, my dear brothers and sisters. And imagine these mercies for every single individual on the face of this earth, from the beginning to the end. This is all one unit of rahmah, one unit of mercy. So realize how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to each and every one of us. And this inshallah, as, as Ibn al-Qayyim says, will establish a real love between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The seventh point is realizing your place before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realizing who you are in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, the, and, the, and, 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 and the, the reality of that is that we are nothing. We are nothing in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to soften our hearts and humble ourselves before Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, when it comes to Allah, we need to realize that we are in need of Him and He is not in need of us. There is no need of us for him. Uh, just, just to give us a, a kind of example of what we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet والسلام, told us that um, each sama, and he told us that there are seven samawat, there are seven skies. And each sama, each sky, in comparison to the sky above it, is like a ring in a desert. Like a ring in a desert. Now we look at the ant and we, we think that between the ant and us, we are something amazing, we are something huge. The ant is nothing. But if we really understand how, how much of nothing we are in comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your heart will be humbled. I, I want you to imagine with me here. We see the blue sky above us and we see a black sky above that. That black sky, what we call space, and we think that beyond that there's nothing. That is the first sama. What we are able to see is the first sama. After that, there's another sky. There's another sama. And the Prophet ﷺ said that this sama, compared to the one above it, is like a ring in a desert. And that sky, compared to the one above it, is like another ring in a desert. And you go seven times. And above all that lies the arsh of Allah, the throne. Of God and above that throne is Allah Azza wa Jal. how insignificant are we in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala realize the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal, and inshallah as, as Ibn al-Qayyim told us we will have the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the eighth point is being alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the last third of the night the last portion of the night this is an opportunity in which you can cultivate a real relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, He descends to the, to, the, to, the, to the lowest heaven and He asks, Who is He amongst my slaves? Who is He that will ask of me that I may give Him? Ya Allah, look how Allah Azza wa Jal is ready to establish a relationship with you, is ready to have a strong and intimate bond with you. All we need is to reciprocate. We need to want that. We need to yearn for it. We need to work for it. We need to wake up in that last third of the night and ask from Allah. Ask Allah for a good relationship with Him. Ask Allah for us to allow Him with the pure love. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us as He loved the Sahaba. The ninth point that Ibn Qayyim mentions is sitting amongst the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani sitting amongst the ulama, sitting amongst the students of knowledge, the pious, the righteous. Someone that when you look at him, when you look at him, just with the look you know that he's close to Allah. He is God-fearing of Allah. He is conscious of Allah. All he thinks about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sit with these people. And as the Prophet sallallahu said, the more you sit with these people, the more 
their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rub off on you. And ultimately, as Ibn al-Qayyim said, your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real, untainted, pure love will begin to develop. The tenth and final point that Ibn al-Qayyim mentions that will cause the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to stay away from everything that is between your heart and Allah Azza wa Jal. And I think this is a very important issue. Uh, many of us don't realize that there are many things in our life, especially in these days, that can come between ourselves and Allah Azza wa Jal. And, and um, there are open ones that we can see deliberately and there are, are, there are secret hidden ones that we, we don't realize that it is a barrier between us and Allah but we neglect it, we, we, we are naive about it, we don't, we don't realize that it is such a barrier. Uh, he says that basically anything that keeps you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani haram actions, idle talk, backbiting, lying, slander, uh, gossip, business, jobs, family, children, Facebook, video games, television, music, all these issues that take you away from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. All these issues that take you away from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal will take you away from being able to love Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in a pure and an unt and untainted love. So these 10 points Ibn Qayyim mentions that if we adhere to them, if we implement them in our lives, we will inshallah Ta'ala obtain the pure and untainted love for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala.